Across the Fence, we'll explore the Neighbor Rides program and learn how you can help a neighbor in need. I'm going to be joined by two guests, one from the Center on Aging at UVM and the other from the United Way of Chittenden County. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Transportation is a critical issue for many Vermonters, for elders in particular, and for those with disabilities. Something as simple as a ride to the doctor's office can make all the difference in the world. With me this afternoon are the Executive Director of the Center on Aging at the University of Vermont, Jeannie Hutchins, and Allison Platzer, who is the Neighbor Rides Coordinator for the United Way of Chittenden County. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, Thank you. you. Jeannie, let's start out talking a little bit about the Center on Aging at UVM and what it does. Well, the Center was revived about five years ago with a generous donation from Lois McClure. And since then, um, Dr. Pendleberry is our director, and Janet Nunziata is our associate director. And our mission involves uh, three things, education, policy, and research. So um, what we have been doing lately, um, we uh, have just started an Armand Graham's Memorial Research Reward and just awarded that to a couple researchers at the university mm -hmm. who are going to look at nutrition in senior housing here in Burlington. Um, each year we do a symposium in the northern part of the state and the southern part of the state presenting education to uh, people that work with elders in the community. Um, each year we have a theme on health, healthy aging or um, uh, uh, different things that uh, people are really interested in as they care for elders. And then the policy part, we're very involved with the state, with the Department of Aging and Independent Living, um, sitting on committees and, and helping them to research policy issues. And so I was uh, struck by something that I read on your website that Vermont is the second oldest state based on median age. That's pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. Um, a lot of people tend to move back to Vermont. A lot of um, baby boomers bring their parents back to Vermont um, in their final years. So um, yes, we do have an old and aging state. And so what the center does is try to find really creative solutions to meet a lot of the different challenges. Correct. Um, and so um, that brings us, of course, to um, volunteer transportation programs. Why is it so important for elders and people with disabilities? Well, as you know, um, many elders tend to be giving up their driver's license. Um, either they feel it's not safe to drive or maybe their family or law enforcement forces them to give up their driver's license. So, um, especially in a rural state such as Vermont, that, that leaves them um, stranded. There's not a lot of public transportation. But even where there is public transportation, a lot of times elders or persons with disabilities can't negotiate the curbs getting on and off the bus without assistance. Um, maybe they have cognitive issues so they can't figure out the schedules. So um, with the funding cuts that have been happening in the high cost of gas, the programs that do offer rides to low income right now are cutting back and mostly denying personal rides. So they're getting people to medical appointments, but grocery shopping, getting to the drugstore, and even getting to a nursing home where maybe your spouse is for visitation, a lot of people don't have those rides. So there's a real big unmet need. And so Allison, what is the Neighbor Rides program? So basically, um, about a year ago, a lot of people came together to discuss exactly what Jeannie was just saying. United Way convened a meeting with transportation providers and with service providers to talk about this continued erosion of transportation services for seniors and people with disabilities. And because of these, the stagnant funding or the decreased funding, and as you were mentioning, we have such a, an elderly population and the population is growing and more and more people needing transportation and yet these resources are staying stagnant, it was really an opportunity to brainstorm with some creative solutions to try to address this need. And as a result of that, Neighbor Rides formed. So Neighbor Rides is a strategic initiative of the United Way of Chittenden County, but it's really a collaboration between a lot of different community partners, a lot of different, a lot of the transportation providers and a lot of the service providers, and as well as UVM Center on Aging. And basically, we look to use volunteer drivers to help meet the transportation needs of seniors and people with disabilities. And so how does it work exactly? So what we're doing is we're trying to get out and educate the community about how great this need is and how it affects people's lives. And we have people who struggle to get to dialysis appointments. We have people who have a hard time getting to the grocery store and drugstore, as Jeannie said, or visiting their, their spouse of decades in an extended care facility. And, and through that, we're really trying to recruit volunteers because we want to use the volunteer drivers instead of only relying on the contracted vans and sedans that traditionally have transported this population. So through the volunteer recruitment, once we have interested volunteers, we actually refer them to SSTA, which is Special Services Transportation Agency. Mm -hmm. Most people know them by the white vans in town. Right. 
and then SSTA matches and dispatches those volunteers to transport passengers who are ambulatory enough to get in and out of the vehicle by themselves. They might need a supporting hand, but there's no specialized training for the volunteers. Mm -hmm. And so what SSTA does is now when passengers call for a ride, instead of just placing them on a vanish sedan, the first thing they do is look for a volunteer. And so who are these volunteers? These volunteers are people throughout Chittenden County who have an interest in helping their neighbors. They may be people who live in outlying communities in, in Milton or Jericho or Underhill or Huntington, and they're already coming in to Williston or South Burlington. So they're already on their way, so why not bring somebody with them? Mm -hmm. They are often seniors themselves. Um, most of our volunteers are those who are in a situation where they have the time to volunteer during the day, so they're often retirees. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, but it really is, we have some stay-at-home parents who are giving rides. So anyone who has the time and the ability to help their neighbor and they have a vehicle and they're already going somewhere, we, it's really not an additional thing. And you can really make a tangible impact on somebody else's life by helping your neighbor get where they need to go. And so tell me a little bit about what, there is a compensation. There is, well, it's not a compensation, it's mileage reimbursement. Okay. So it's not a stipend, it's just the mileage reimbursement, but it more than covers your trip. We pay that at a rate of 56 and a half cents per mile. So right now the transportation um, funding goes through the Chittenden County Transportation Aid, uh, Authority, one mm -hmm. of our partners, CCTA, the city buses. And they do a variety of transportation programs throughout the county, trying to meet the needs of all the residents of Chittenden County. And one of the th ways they do that is they contract with SSTA to provide rides for seniors and people with disabilities. So CCTA is able to use some of that money to pay the mileage reimbursement for volunteers. And so volunteers get 56 and a half cents per mile for the trip. And that basically is from when the volunteer leaves their home, drives and picks up the passenger, takes that passenger to their destination, either to a doctor's appointment, to a grocery store, or one of the other places. Transportation then from that destination back to the passenger's house, and then from the passenger's house back to the volunteer's home. And some of these rides, though, are one way. Yes, all rides are scheduled one way. So, as we were mentioning, people need rides to, say, dialysis treatment. Mm -hmm. And that can be a long appointment. We don't have the expectation that volunteers wait there the entire time. Volunteers drop the passenger off, and then they can either choose to return at a specific time to give a ride home, or they can just do a one-way trip. If it's a shorter errand, if it's going to the pharmacy or going to the grocery store, we generally request volunteers do round trips, but it's not mandated. Mm -hmm. And so what are some of the obstacles to putting this <laughs> whole program together? Because there are a lot of moving parts, it sounds like. There are a lot of moving parts. And, and as a collaboration, it's, it's trying to make sure that we um, are able to address this unmet need, but make sure that we can fit within everyone's um, parameters. And I, I'd say the biggest problem right now is, is lack of knowledge throughout the community, that people take transportation for granted. They don't think about the fact that when they need something, they get in the car and go. And it's really, as every volunteer that we get comes back and says within the first month, I had no idea how bad the problem was. And I had no idea how easy it was to make a difference. And I think people just take transportation for granted. So our hardest part has been the volunteer recruitment because people just don't realize how important transportation is and how it really can affect the, the lives of seniors and people with disabilities and how much um, of an impact it's having, especially in the outlying areas of Chittenden County where there aren't the resources that are here in Burlington and South Burlington. Mm -hmm. And so, Jeannie, from your standpoint, I mean, if, if someone is, say, had a hospital stay, has been discharged from the hospital but still has to go to get either physical therapy or treatment, but they can't drive, mm -hmm. I mean, they're really up a creek. They are up a creek, and it, it is a big problem. Um, you know, oftentimes we think of medical appointments, you know, just going to the doctors and, and that type of thing. But you're, you're right, when somebody is discharged and they have, you know, a series of physical therapy appointments or something that they have to, to um, go to and they don't have family to help, um, it does become a large problem. I would imagine, too, that having this service as volunteer service uh, allows people to be a lot more independent as opposed to maybe a longer stay in a facility or even a permanent move to a facility. Yeah, uh, discharge planning would take that into account if they were going to discharge someone to home. You know, are you able to get to the doctor within the next week? Um, would you be able to do your physical therapy? So it might make a difference between somebody being discharged to home and somebody being discharged to a long-term care facility for rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And so why should a person volunteer for this? Well, as I was mentioning before, it's a very easy way to have a very tangible impact on your neighbor's lives. 
you may already be going somewhere, so take somebody with you. Uh, the mileage reimbursement is a nice incentive, but it's, it's just helping people meet their basic needs, and it's really helping to contribute to a healthier community throughout Chittenden County because seniors and, and people with disabilities are a population that needs to be able to access services and programs just like any other population. Um, it really, we have people who don't get to leave their house. Maybe they don't have one of these medical needs, but they just want to visit a loved one or they want to socialize and they have no way to get there. And so it really not only affects the ability for physical health to get to these medical appointments, but it affects the social well-being. And when you look at a portion of the population, if they're not meeting their needs, it really is going to affect the whole population. Absolutely. And so if someone's thinking about volunteering, what do they need to know about the program? Do they need to have a certain kind of car? No, that's a great question. Basically, if you're out driving on the road and you're a safe driver, then you would qualify. Uh, we require that you have a personal vehicle because volunteers use their own vehicles. Mm -hmm. We require that it's insured and we require that you have the state minimum for insurance. Your car has to be inspected. Um, we, we, we ask that your car be in good condition. Um, so basically, if you're out driving on the road um, safely and you have seatbelts in your car and it's inspected and, and four tires and all of that, then you would qualify. Uh, to volunteer, we also do background checks because safety is our number one priority. Right. Um, and those are kind of the main requirements for volunteering. And so um, you have a group of volunteers already. And so what do you hear back from them? Just uh, as I was mentioning before, we just hear about this awareness. And, and I had no idea there was such a need. And it's such an easy, easy thing to do. Um, and I also hear about the great relationships they're forming because we talk about all of these benefits for the passengers and you know improving their health and their, their mental health. But it is for the volunteers too. You get to hear some great stories, you get to connect with people uh, and form some friendships. And volunteers just always have great experiences from it. And you know while they appreciate the mileage reimbursement, after they do the first couple of rides, it's really about seeing how they can have such an big effect by putting such a little time and little effort into helping somebody. And I would imagine too there's a, another side benefit um, because now you have someone who's going to be going to a house to pick somebody up and it's sort of a, a welfare check too to make sure that they're there, they're yeah. okay. And once you get to know that person if you see you know, maybe something that alarms you about their health, um, there's a way to, to report that as well mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yes and we, we ask volunteers you know if anything looks um, I don't know if suspicious is the right word, mm -hmm. but if you have concerns about anything, to, to please contact SSTA, and they're the ones who are doing the matching and dispatching, and, and they know all the passengers very well, and, and they have the training and the capacity to, to address these issues. Mm -hmm. So we don't ask volunteers to assume that responsibility of intervening, but we ask them to be an extra set of eyes, as you were saying, and then refer it to, to the appropriate person. Okay. Um, I wanted to point out, too, that many of these programs that are in place now that we're supplementing to begin with are for low-income seniors, mm -hmm. and there's another whole co cohort of people that aren't considered low-income, not Medicaid eligible, that we also would like to get to and give rides to so they can go to the senior centers for meals and the socialization. So this is the beginning, and we hope to grow it to serve that other population that really has no services now. So how does someone become a volunteer? Um, I just wanted to comment on what Jeannie was saying, too, because it's a great point. This program is not income-based, because as she was saying, a lot of people um, who are Medicaid eligible can get rides for, for certain things, but there's a huge part of the population that doesn't qualify for that, and then there aren't any transportation options. Um, so if someone wants to volunteer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so if someone wants to volunteer, uh, I would recommend that they get in contact with me, Allison Platzer, mm -hmm. and they can call me at 861-7833. That's my direct line at the United Way of Chittenden County. You could also go to our website, United Way of Chittenden County, and if you click on the volunteer link on the left-hand side, you'll see a neighbor rides link. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also email me. Uh, my name is Allison. It's a unique spelling. It's A-L-Y-S-O-N at unitedwaycc.org. You could also probably contact Jeannie at UVM Center on Aging, um, but the, the quickest path would be to come to me. And once again, um, what are people looking at for a time commitment for drivers? That's a great question. We really try to work with the volunteer schedule, um, and so we kind of set it up on a weekly basis. And basically at the beginning or the end of the week, uh, for the following week, we'll call and say, you know, we have these seven rides in your area available. Would you like to do none of them, one of them, seven of them? And you really get to pick and choose. You could also say, you know what, um, I only want to do Tuesdays and Thursdays between these hours. Mm -hmm. So we really try to work with the flexibility of, of what your schedule is. Uh, and you can always say no to a ride. 
Okay, well, I want to thank you both for joining me today. It's a great program. Thank That's you. our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.